So, after an excruciatingly long and busy January, I can finally sit down and tinker about with all the games that I got for Christmas. And considering what all of my friends got me on Blu-ray for Christmas, such as Machete Girl and Hop and Space Buddies and uh, the nude nuns with big guns. Uh, I cannot wait to cover all of the games that they got me for Christmas as well. Friends can be just so thoughtful sometimes, you know? Don't you? Don't you? Don't you? Don't you fucking... Salutations, my beautiful people. <laughs> Greetings and salutations, my beautiful people, and welcome to the Kadekara show where I always have to do the dirty deed of deciding whether or not a game deserves to be slaughtered or salvaged. And today I'm gonna go a little bit mellow for you guys because I decided I'm gonna cover whatever the fuck games I got for Christmas. Yes, I know I'm a little late for this by about two months. Yes, I know nobody cares. And yes, I know, I wasted a perfectly good opportunity that I could have used to great advantage during a time closer to the holidays, and, and I'm a very shameless human being, and yeah, fuck it! What did I do to deserve this? Where did I go so wrong? Why won't she answer the door when I knock? I know I'm not perfect, I know I've made mistakes, but I, I know that she sees me because when I knock on the door she runs deeper into the house! And as it turns out, I actually got two very, very different games from the same person. My very good friend Zara. So, you know, thank you Zara. Hopefully I won't want to strangle you once I play through these beauties. So yeah, surprise double review everybody! And first off, I'm going to have to get through the first game out of the two, SpongeBob SquarePants and Friends Unite, also known as Nicktoons Unite in the USA. Eh, it's alright, I guess. And now on to the next game, The Great Escape. Because... Well, it's the man village. Yeah, out of these two, I couldn't give this one a fair review because I'm not familiar with everything in the Nicktoon universe. So I feel as though something like this is more accustomed to being reviewed by someone on YouTube like a Nickelodeon fan for the win. I mean, bearing in mind how much he knows, I'm sure he could give a much more fair review than myself. Hello? Don't do that ever again. I'm sorry, Jimmy, I won't do it again. Anyway, just like every single movie ever made, and that's a fact, there are video games that are made for them. Literally. Every single movie. Look it up. I'm not even making it up. And The Great Escape was based on the 1963 cinematic classic World War II stealthy, classy, tense, and horrifically entertaining movie of the same name, starring Speed McQueen. And nothing else needs to be said about it. It's an absolute classic. And if you haven't seen it yet, why the fuck are you even watching this video? Go and watch it, you shits. And so, in 2003, the now closed down Pivotal Games took it upon themselves to make a game out of it. Wait, 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 wait. Seriously? It took until 2003? Business executives thought that E.T., Moonwalker, and Wayne's World could be hot selling video game masterpieces, and yet no one exploited the Great Escape? Ever? Until 2003? I guess they just decided to wait. I mean, this game could be like Splinter Cell meets Excite Bike. Just needed to wait for the technology. I get you. No, 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 really, I do. So why am I even waiting? My PC gaming fingers are a little bit rusty. So let's just get on and play the game. These games. These games. Know what I mean? Those extremely okay movie licensed games that decently follow scenes from the movie, try their hardest to recreate those classic moments, get impressionist voice actors to try and reinvent those in the movie that passed away, and then added in with a few cool game mechanics. You know, a surprising amount of effort, yet somehow no effort at all. I mean, before we begin, even the menu here is pretty promising, and it even has the original title theme from the movie. No bullshit remixes like in Jaws Unleashed. For copyright reasons, I can't play you it just now, but believe me when I say that it's brilliantly uplifting. Then when you hit new game, it opens you up to a lovely plane battle over Berlin, and good lord this is too fucking sensitive! So then after a bit of tweaking with the settings, we start off with putting out fires, and then a turret section. Isn't. This. 
fun. It doesn't last too long, even though it feels like a millennium, and then we have to abandon the craft after substantial damage. We parachute down and land on enemy lines and then get caught by those rowdy Germans who are happy to see us. Another cutscene later and the game begins with us talking to this fine fellow and we're playing as a character from the movie called McDonald who- OH MY GOD! What happened to his face? He looks like Cole Phelps if he was made from ham. We are then given an objective to talk to another guy and then we get out and about to test the core aspect of this game. Stealth. And this adds in some lovely things to the genre, such as the stealth cam, which, when held down with the shift button, allows you to look anywhere around you, particularly around corners. This is cool. What isn't cool, however, is this camera angle itself. I mean, Jesus Christ, you couldn't be any half closer, could you? It's so close to the back of your head, it might as well be in first person, and honestly, I couldn't find a way to change it. Anyway, there are some other basic stealthy mechanics, including picking up loud distraction objects, such as bottles, to throw or hit guards with. It sounds basic enough, however- <laughs> Oh shit, I wasted it! And along with the handy stealth cam, you can also use the shift key to look through the keyholes. This is also very cool. And all in all, I can conclude that the shift key for stealth peeking in this game is just cool. The end. So we finish off the first goal and get awarded with this compelling cutscene. Excuse me, I'm looking for the big X. Well, you found him. I'm George Alexander, the big X here in Dulag Luft 10. I bet you're eager to escape. Yes, I am. What do I need to do? It's great when all your characters sound like this in your game so that you can thoroughly engross and captivate your audience with magical storytelling. Yay! And with these cutscenes, it always feels as though you're watching a badly done and pre-alpha black and white cut of a Thunderbirds episode. Excuse me, I'm looking for the big X. Well, you found him. I bet you're eager to escape. Yes, I am. What do I need to do? So then we get another objective to go and get a German pass from the guardhouse and bring it back in order to copy the eagle insignia. <laughs> no biggie, I'm Cole Hamface Phelps. Nothing is too hard for me. Hmm, what's this? The guard in the the guardhouse is sleeping and we need to move stealthily? Okay, gotcha. Stealthy it is. Unfortunately, I can't see the guard anywhere, but... <laughs> okay. There he is. And yes, he's certainly sleeping. However, after a quick look around the surrounding area in the guardhouse, I must say that for 2003, this game doesn't look that bad, actually. The textures and shading are okay, the lights and colours are good, the animations are smooth, and there's enough visual variety in the stages to make it very pleasant to look at. Sure, it's a little dated and not amazing for the time, especially when all your characters look like they've melted, but it does the job. It's just a shame that I can't see anything around me for most of the time. And now we have a new objective and a time limit to go with it. You'll find that most of the game's objectives are actually timed, and I like this. Due to the low enemy and guard tower count in most of the levels, there's a better chance of getting stealthy missions done faster, so instead of taking your sweet ass time, you can just quickly blast through all these time missions like a ninja, while at the same time not getting ahead of yourself and slipping up to get caught. You'd think it'd be too demanding in a stealth game, but for this particular stealth game, it's never a stressful mechanic to work around. However, because of this faster gameplay, the game sacrifices hiding spots. Enemies are very predictable with short and exact patterns, and they can't even read your footprints. So instead of tricking your enemies and hiding away from them to advance, you're instead just focusing simply on finding a path around their path patterns and nothing else. Which, in hindsight, may not be great, but the timed objectives and level design accommodates this pretty well and it makes you feel extremely ninja. Now after that, we need to return the pass before the Germans find out it's missing. I got it. But before we can leave these barracks here, we need to wait. Wait, 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 wait! Okay, guys, let's get real for a second. I know this is a stealth game and we need to get around the enemies and take our time, blah, 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 but I found that nearly half of my time playing this game ended with me stood around like a ham-faced dickhead just waiting. And here's the thing, most of you know that MGS is one of my favourite franchises of all time, and yes, there's a fair amount of waiting in those games as well, I understand this. But in MGS, you're constantly on guard, constantly thinking ahead, planning your next move, scouting enemy locations, dispatching some enemies, setting up distractions, and even if you are moving through enemies, sites, you are moving ever so slightly. Every second in a stealth game needs to be used effectively, and MGS forces you to be patient and productive. But here, there's no need to plan for any of this stuff. I know that there's only one enemy, I know where he's walking, I know exactly where I'm going, I have no weapons or distractions, and I'm literally just waiting here for no fucking reason other than wasting my bloody time! And this isn't just because this is stage one. In every other stage I played that involved guards walking about, this becomes a tiresome idea very quickly. Guys, stealth is more than just an advanced red light, green light, and it'll be much better if I didn't feel as though I'm just waiting for a friend train to clear some tracks in order for me to carry on. But anyway, enough ranting, because once that is over, I get another objective involving talking to another guy. I'm starting to notice a pattern here. Then we do some more waiting before meeting another guy who asks us to get some other things and bring them back to him. Yeah, more fetch quests. And unfortunately, yet again, most of the game is like this. Talk to this guy, talk to that guy, grab this for this guy, grab that for that guy, rinse and repeat. Sure, the stages can dot in some vehicles, shooting, and some decent strategic maneuvering puzzles every so often, but it's mostly just talking, waiting, fetching, waiting, and repeating, and waiting. But I will say that while I was waiting, I noticed that the sound design is actually pretty good with the voice placements and sound effects. And the music is 
isn't too bad either. And once you break free from the curse of waiting around guards, exploring the corners of the levels that you're on and searching for additional optional items ends up being pretty fun. Back to the mission though, chaps, because now I must do yet another fetch quest. Fine, I guess I'll just have to do- Whoa! A random search happens. And then once Alec Baldwin here checks you out, we can then move along with other stuff. But then all of a sudden I get spotted and it's here that we get to witness this game's marvelous combat. But unfortunately, all is lost as my story ends dead. Whoever knew that the floor materializing into my face was the true threat here? And just to test the games as spotted by the enemy mechanics, I deliberately got caught multiple times in this bit to see if I could actually avoid it. Well, I couldn't escape, couldn't lower the alarms, couldn't fight off the guards, and overall this mechanic of the game is just fucking broken. There's nowhere to hide even if you do avoid them, so you know what? You might as well hit the restart button once you get spotted because you can't do shit to get out of it. And once you die, you start right at the fucking beginning again. However, it's honestly just worth it to punch your way through people because it does this to them. <laughs> And to be honest guys, if you watch my show, you would know that I am not one for cheating on any game at all. But this time I feel as though I can make an exception because I want to use a level skip to see what else this game can throw at me. So, all we gotta do is go to the main menu, hold shift, and then key in court again. Well, there's a load of stages for one, but after playing through all of these, they're all the same story more or less. One stage had some driving, much smarter enemies with guns, and some of... This. And then there was another snow stage where you're in enemy disguise, so nothing happens at all until you get to the shooting. And holy fuck, this shooting is unplayably bad in third person. Look at this wibbly wobbly mess, I'm not even moving the mouse right now. Luckily though, there's a first person mode for the shooting, which comes in great handy for sniping. However, I get myself a sniper rifle, do this mission and get killed more or less instantly and die in a very unfortunate position. Then there was this nighttime stage after a tunneling sequence that was exactly the same as every other stage, except I was stuck listening to this the entire time. The then I got spotted, tried running and hiding to no avail, knocked up two guys and then couldn't hit the other for some fucking reason, died and then I gave up. But my favourite stage had to be this one here in a foggy airfield. And this man here looked handy enough, but... I'm just going to slow you down. Find somewhere to hide me. You miserable fuck. And with God as my witness, I could not get past this pissing fence. I used wire cutters and tried crouching under it and literally tried for 30 minutes to get past this bit, but nothing happened. I don't know. How do I even do this? But despite all of these hardships, I absolutely have to try the last level. If you're familiar with the movie and you're familiar with the bike chase scene, it's infinitely, amazingly, incredibly famous, but you would have thought that the best part of the game could have been squeezed out and come out of that part. So, I hope that that level can shed some light onto this game on the last level. So, let's give it a go. What the fuck? Shit! Holy shit! What the f- What is this? Shit! What am I doing? What is going on? Look at this fucking fuck- Okay, I'm gonna be honest here. This is the most glorious mess of a game ending I've ever seen in my life. Nothing works here. It's just unfathomable. There are no physics. The controls are destroyed. Turning is too slow and too tight. There are more glitches here than in-game trees and people are flying fucking everywhere doing Russian cassette dancing! And I've gotta be honest, it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I'm serious! This is fucking fantastic! How could you get the most iconic scene from the movie this wrong? Just look at it! I mean, what else can I even say? I just can't do it. I tried multiple times and kept dying constantly, but <laughs> fuck it. I can't stay mad at something this tragically funny. Whoever thought that this was a good idea must have also thought that Whoopi Goldberg should marry Gerard Depardieu so that her name becomes Whoopi Doopy Doo. And trust me, it may not look funny, but for the love of God, try playing it for yourself. It's impossible. You'll die both in game and in real life out of the lols, as the kids say. So Zara, where SpongeBob may have just been okay and the great escape extreme extremely bland, you have undoubtedly given me the one of the biggest laughs and one of the most largest, complete, epic flops of a game ending of all time, and that has made it all worth it. Sure, you might have ruined that one scene and maybe the entire movie for me, but you know what, who cares? Both of these games get the slavage. <laughs> As I was saying, both of these games get the slavage. Why? One of the most recognized
unrecognizable and cherished movie moments of all time reduced to a steaming pile of... <laughs> That's it! I give up! <laughs> no more! I quit! You hear me, world? I give up! You win! I, I, I never even liked Capri Sun! I'm a liar! A fraud! A charlatan! A fake! You! You will never remember! No one will! I promise I will make the people choose! Rise up after the treachery! Catch Wilson with his, with his trousers down and fight our way to the end of days! I swear! We will win! And we shall overcome the disgusting taste of frozen yoghurt! I don't... I don't even... I don't fucking... Ay, 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 ay. Hello there everybody and thanks very much for watching my stupid review of The Great Escape. If you enjoyed this video then please don't forget to hit that little like button and if you want to see what I do all the time and keep up to date, don't forget to subscribe. And also I have to give a big thanks to Jimmy, also known as Nintendo Fan for the win, and he gave me that great little bit of footage there just for me and I'm very grateful. And so here is his top 5 GameCube games video on the right hand side. Go and have a look, you will not regret it. You can follow me on Twitter, like me on Facebook and even buy t-shirts and posters from me and the links are all in the description. And as always if it's your birthday today or watching this video then happy freaking birthday to you and please remember to stay beautiful thanks again for watching guys and i'll see you all next time just just don't do that don't do not just stop no no stop it Swear to fucking God.